Hi guys. I am really, really nervous. God, it's so weird. I was, um, I was totally fine about the idea of talking about this with you guys because I feel so comfortable around you and I feel I can tell you anything about my life but for some reason I <laughs> I sit my I sit down and it's difficult it is super difficult Amburguesa is right here right now and the train is passing by so I'm so sorry for all of these distractions and such a weird video announcement this is what happens when you live in brooklyn and this is what happens when you have a cat that uh, suddenly gets super excited about you sitting on the floor so i'm so sorry if you guys are distracted by all of this so as you can see by the title of this video i had a miscarriage and it's been honestly like i was thinking about if 2020 <laughs> was <laughs> wasn't already such a horrible year I had a miscarriage to add that on top, uh, add that to the blender of all of the things, the nasty things that the world has gone through this year, all of the racism and all of the, uh, the deaths and people starving um, in Chile because of this whole pandemic and all of, this thing, all, of, all of these things that we see on the news. If that even wasn't enough, I, I went through a miscarriage and this was the whole reason why i've been so quiet lately and why i've been so absent from from all of what is happening not only in my country chile because things are upside down over there because of the pandemic but also be, uh, why i've been so quiet around the black lives matter movement which i support a hundred percent but um i'm begging you to understand that i haven't been quiet around these subjects, not because I don't support them or because I am um, passive towards what I feel. It's, I haven't said anything because I'm going through hell right now, you guys. Even though it's so painful to talk about this right now, I really wanted to make a video about miscarriages because when I was going through my miscarriage, I realized no one talks about this. And now I understand why, but at the same time I felt so lonely i felt like a train again i felt like we need to be more open about these things i completely understand if you don't want to be open about this because i get it is is one of the um it's not one of it's the most painful thing that i've ever been through and i understand if people want to be silent about it but i want to make people feel feel less lonely about miscarriages so that's why i'm going to talk about it i need to i never do disclaimers you guys on videos uh but i need to do a couple right now um i am going to talk a lot about tmi stuff so if you feel sensitive or trigger about miscarriages or anything around pregnancy or failed pregnancy this is not the video for you at the same time, if you want to watch the entire video or if you want to watch the video on parts, I'm going to leave the video menu or like the sections of this video in case you want to jump into another section or like to another question or another segment of this video. If you don't want to watch the whole thing or you want to skip the TMI stuff, that's totally okay. And also my second disclaimer is don't take this video as a, me a medical um, advice. I'm not a doctor, as you can tell, I'm an artist. <laughs> and the thing that I, I went through uh, might not be the same situation uh, as you, uh, all body types are different. So please, you can take this as a guidance, of course, but never take this as the law and the thing that you're supposed to do. So please, like, if you have any questions about what you're going through, I beg you, please call your doctor or the emergency because they are going to assist you better better than I am going to assist you anyway. Also, by the way, I'm, as you can tell, I am a Latina and English is not my first language. So I'm so sorry if I'm not using the proper words to describe how I feel of, or if I not use the proper terminology or like the proper words or phrases to um, describe things. So please be patient. 
of my Latinaness and how I um, express myself verbally. I, I wish I could be more eloquent sometimes with words. I guess that's why I'm a I'm an illustrator because I can communicate better with illustrations. But anyway, so I'm sure you already guys know, or like not all of you, but some of you already know that I went through a miscarriage because I uploaded talking about illustration. I I t I uploaded a comic about my miscarriage. I'm gonna leave it down below in case you wanna read it. And that was kind of like um, a summary of what I've been through this past couple of weeks. I guess. There's not much of a story around me and Ed wanting to have a baby. A lot of you guys assume that Ed and I didn't want to have babies. And we thought a lot about having a baby or not. Because this is the thing, guys. I <laughs> How to describe this? Ed and I have been living abroad. We come from Chile, both of us. And we have been moving our asses around the world for a long time now but we have been we haven't been in one city for more than two years since i don't know 2012 or something like that so when we moved to new york and it started this uh, phd program we were like okay we are finally going to have a baby now um because we're going to be here for at least seven years and we love new york and we love brooklyn and um the thing is, you guys, I've been terrified about being a mom, even though I love kids and I get really, like, I get along with kids really well because I, I can draw basically and they ask me to draw things all the time. I, I've been terrified about being a mom and motherhood, mainly because I was really afraid of losing myself while being a mom. And I don't know if this is something that goes hand in hand to, of, parenthood and like being a mom itself but I was really afraid of like not being myself anymore and I am really scared of obviously of change and I love being with Ed like I think Ed and I are, are really like a really good team we have been together for so long we have been together for 13 years now and I love us I love just being me and Ed and adding a person to the team uh, sounds wonderful, but I was like, oh my god, what? Like, I wonder how this um, thing is going to change, that this relationship is going to change. And also, you guys, I've been terrified of my motherhood because I'm a business owner, and since I am the main provider of this household, I was terrified of um, distancing myself from social media and my work and my business and suddenly like people forgetting about me or not being able to provide for my family anymore like me and Ed and not being able to pay rent anymore the the whole idea of being a freelancer and um and being the main provider is that uh being a freelancer sometimes means that income is not secure and i miss sometimes being someone else's employee because you know that your boss is going to pay you every month but when you're a freelancer you're in your your own boss it was really tricky for me like okay how i'm going to be able to being a mom and also being still a business owner like my own boss how am i going to pay for my maternity leave and all of that so they i was like really struggling to like think about these things uh, at the same time but anyway so and then I were like, okay, this is the year, 2020, amazing year. What a year ahead of us, full of opportunities and like amazing things, lol. Um, and we decided to start trying and I thought, you guys, that getting pregnant was going to take me a long time because I have like small cysts on my ovaries and um, all of my doctors have uh, told me since I was younger that it was going to take me a while to get pregnant. And to my surprise, it, I got pregnant really fast, which was a huge shock to me. I honestly thought it was going to take me longer to get pregnant. So when we started trying, it's, it's unbelievable how you say you start trying and you picture that person having sex with the other person. But anyway, you can picture me having sex. That's, that's fine. I, I allow that imagination to go wild and I'm like yeah definitely I think it's going to happen next year or something like that and we were super chill about it we weren't like having like 
<laughs> like schedule like anything we were like if it happens happens if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but it happened super fast and it was a shock to me you guys because i wasn't planning on getting pregnant during the pandemic so i was really scared of being judged you guys because i've i've seen comments online saying like oh my god if you're pregnant during the pandemic uh you're a responsible human being and how can you um, bring more children into this world? Can you see how fucked up this world is already? Blah, blah. And I was reading these comments online while being pregnant and I felt awful because I know exactly what that person means and I can absolutely put myself in, that sh in those shoes. And I, I just want to say really quickly, you're absolutely entitled, entitled to have your opinions and your thoughts and if you still think that it's irresponsible to be pregnant during the pandemic, I absolutely understand. I don't share those thoughts. I don't think it's irresponsible. It was just inconvenient. And I am, I am telling this from experience, from someone who was pregnant during the pandemic. And it's just everything, it's a pain in the ass, you guys. And I'm assuming this also happens when you're pregnant, pregnant not during the pandemic. That, but there were a lot of things that I couldn't do because I was pregnant. I couldn't go to the grocery shop because there was a huge chance that I could get COVID-19 and around that time um, no one knew what was going to happen with pregnant uh, people and like how they were going to react with the COVID-19 so I'm like okay I can't go out I can't go to the grocery shop so Ed had to do a lot of those things for me he had to do laundry um, um, also because our laundry room it's kind of like outside of our flat so I couldn't do laundry anymore. So Ed had to do a lot of the tasks that I wasn't able to do myself. But again, when you're pregnant, you kind of, there's also other things that you can or you're not supposed to do. So I'm like, it's fine. The inconvenient thing came when we had to go to the doctor for our fair, uh, first sonogram, our first like scanning procedure. And Ed wasn't allowed to go inside with me to the room, like to the, to the hospital because they wanted to have um, the fewer people possible. I don't know if I'm phrasing that correctly, but basically only patients were allowed in waiting rooms. So Ed missed all of the times that I saw the baby, um, that I saw the heart for the first time, and I saw the baby moving around and all of that. He missed everything. Of course, I have pictures of the baby and I share with uh, share them with him. I wasn't allowed to record or film anything during all of the scanning and like sonograms procedures. So it was kind of like a shitty thing for Ed to miss. And that was the inconvenience thing of being pregnant during the pandemic. Other than that, my pregnancy, like I said, was kind of uneventful. I got really sleepy, obviously, and it was a really tricky thing to film videos for you guys. <laughs> if I can describe how being pregnant feels like, at least to me, it, it felt like I was uh, like experiencing jet lag all day long. I felt like I was gonna crush my bed or my couch at like 5 p.m. because I couldn't take it any longer. I was just like, I was a zombie all day long. And this is something that you guys maybe are going to resent me for because a lot of the times that I Google miscarriage or I I, I just uh, read the comments on YouTube videos saying like, is did you feel anything? Did you know you were going to through a miscarriage? And to be absolutely honest, you guys, I didn't feel anything. I felt pregnant the entire time. So unfortunately, and this is why I think you're going to resent me for because there's nothing at the moment that tells you that you're going through a miscarriage because you still feel pregnant. And this is why I think, I, I mean, I, I definitely had a mis miscarriage in the sense that my body never felt that I the baby wasn't alive anymore. So there was one day in which Ed and I went to the, um, to the hospital because we had this appointment with our um, OBGYN for the first time and I was really excited to meet this doctor. She was amazing by the way, we got along super well. And I was so relaxed you guys, I was so calm during the entire thing. I never got nervous um, before any sonogram, before any scanning, but I never felt like, oh my God, I'm having a weird hunch or like, oh my God, I feel super weird. I know something wrong is going to happen. So no, not even they told me, there's no heartbeat. 
I, I basically felt absolutely calm and sane about everything until of course they did um, a transvaginal, I hate those by the way, a transvaginal scanning um, thing and the doctor was um, suddenly super serious and she told me you know what I can't see your baby's heartbeat and by then I was at 10 weeks or something like that and basically I had to go back to all of the sonograms and like they wanted to check and like confirm basically that the baby didn't have uh, if there was any any heartbeat or uh, or whatnot and I was in shock you guys probably the entire time I couldn't believe this was I know it sounds so cliche now when I said it out loud but I can't believe it happened to me even when I was experiencing it and even when the doctors were telling me I'm so sorry for your loss I couldn't I it was just like surreal to be witnessing that firsthand and I remember calling Ed because by the way Ed was downstairs he couldn't see me and I'm like you know what something weird is happening and they can't see the heartbeat but I don't know if this is true or like I don't know if I should be concerned or about um, the doctor looked really concerned so I don't know if this is I'm going to I'm going to let you know once the sonogram is over and once I found out, by the way, I experienced all of this by myself, you guys. Ed wasn't there with me. He couldn't be there with me. This is like the inconvenience part of that I was telling you about. And um, once uh, they confirm all of this information, I had to go back to the doctor because they were in separate offices, like the sonogram scanning department and my OBGYN's office was on a separate building. So I had to go all the way back while calling Ed and telling him, yeah, there's no heartbeat. I have to talk to the doctor now. So um, I, I need to hang out because I'm about to go in a, <laughs> in a freaking elevator. So I need to call you back. And Ed then told me that he started bawling out like his eyes out. He cried so much by himself, by the way, on the street by himself. And when I finally saw the doctor, she told me, I know that you're super composed right now and that I see you that you're as a whole like dealing with this really well. And the minute she said that, I started crying like crazy, of course. And she says, but this is going to be really hard for you and your husband because this is a, a great loss. This is a huge loss. And uh, she said, I know you can't do this right now because of the pandemic, but I highly suggest that you and your husband go away for a while so, so, just so you can more and like um, cry over this. Of course, we couldn't do that for obvious reasons. Uh, but she, that basically what she told me, guys, in that this was amongst the horrible thing that I was dealing with at the moment, this was the best thing that she could have ever told me. And she said, there's nothing that you did or you didn't do that caused this. It wasn't your fault. This was nothing on you. This wasn't because you drink, you drank coffee or because you went on a run or this wasn't because you did something or you didn't do something. This was just because it's the body making their own decisions and this wasn't a viable pregnancy. It wasn't because Ed's sperm was cursed or damaged or because your eggs weren't like, you know, good enough. This wasn't, this was just because the combination of these two things just simply didn't work. And that you guys was just like the best thing that I've heard during those days because you start thinking on that. <laughs> when I was on, um, in the waiting room, I started thinking, oh my God, was it because I drank coffee? Which I, um, I need to confess this right now. I'm, I, am, I drink a lot of coffee regularly, but during my pregnancy, I don't know why I just couldn't drink coffee. So I knew it wasn't the coffee, but you still start thinking about like, oh my God, was it that day that I drank coffee? That one day I drank coffee or was it that day? Is it because I'm vegan? And you start thinking about all of these things. So the doctor knew that I was vegan. The doctor knew that I was taking all of these vitamins. So she's like, don't worry. This wasn't because of your lifestyle or anything. It's just that it happens. After she told me that, I asked her, what am I supposed to do now? And uh, she said, well, you have two choices. 
either you weighed and you guys i'm so sorry for using such a like raw and harsh terminology to describe this but it's really hard for me to like find the right words um she said either you wait until your body gets rid of everything that it's inside of you the the dead baby and all of the tissue and your placenta and everything by itself or you go under this um, surgery in this procedure in which uh, it's called in dnc which is uh, stands for a delita uh, dilatation and cortage which basically means that they clean basically everything that it's inside of you um, she said that it's also a procedure in which you can choose whether you want to be fully asleep or partially asleep and um, and I'm like, I know you're not supposed to tell me what to do right now because of liability reasons, but I'm, I told her like, I beg you to tell me what to do right now because there's nothing, like I can't think, I, I wasn't able to make a decision around that time and she's like, if I can give you an advice, since you're already so advanced in your pregnancy, I highly suggest that you go under the surgery and the procedure because it's going to be super painful for your body to get rid of the baby. So she um, recommended me a few places that uh, were doing that procedure at the time, because like I said, um, the inconvenience part of the pandemic is that the hospital that I went to, they weren't um, doing that procedure at the time. She actually recommended me Planned Parenthood to do the procedure and then, um, And it fuck. And then I went, man. And then I um, went downstairs, and I saw Ed for the first time since this whole thing started. And um, we started crying, you guys, so much. We didn't care that there were a lot of people standing next to us. <laughs> It was kind of like a movie scene type of situation because we were outside of a god of a freaking parking lot and we cried so much and it sucked you guys it sucked so bad and then um we started walking back home and we started talking about everything because I, I like I could basically tell him for the first time what all of the doctors told me and what happened and what went wrong and uh, I started uh, we started talking about the procedure and I felt so lost because I had no idea what to do but I knew even though going to any sort of like hospital or clinic or office to get this procedure done would have meant getting covid because basically you're walking into a place full of people i'm like i don't care i just want this to be over with and i want i just i need someone to take this baby away from me but at the same time it feels like that was the biggest contradiction that i've ever felt you guys because i i wanted this to be over with, but at the same time, I didn't want anyone to take this baby away from me. Even if it was dead. It's so weird, right? That you want this to be over and you want to start fresh and to feel, feel good again. But at the same time, you don't want this to be over with. It's such a like, such a weird thing to explain, but I hope you get what I mean. So. We went back home. Um, I'm gonna have coffee because I know. We went. Um, God, <laughs> we went back home, and um, we started calling Planned Parenthood in order to see if they had any appointments available and if we're doing that type of procedure. And um, we cried so much that day. And I, we told every, all of our friends who knew that I was pregnant. Not a lot of people knew that I was pregnant because we knew that even though we were so sure nothing happened was nothing bad was going to happen, we told very few people. Like um, 
one friend knew and my mom knew and our neighbors knew only because if anything happened it was nice that someone else knew but now you guys i understand why you're not supposed to tell people when you're pregnant during the first trimester and it's only because i can't describe how painful it was to share the news with people i can't describe that enough and usually friends and family members when something this like this happens to you the only thing they want to do is talk to you and hug you and be there with you and because of the pandemic they can't they can't wait with you they can't hug you they can't talk to you and be there with you and you can't speak so it's almost like and it's not like this but it's almost like if you owe them to talk about this with them but you can't because it's too much to bear so um this is of course really personal you're not forced to not tell your family members and friends when you're pregnant because it's such a like amazing news to share and you wanna bring some light into this world especially right now but um I beg you please to think about this because I went through a miscarriage and it's such a horrible thing to tell to people so when we call Planned Parenthood they, they told us that they had an appointment for Tuesday and that day was Friday so I had to wait you guys four days um, to get this appointment done and that was the worst weekend of my life it happened also to be the weekend of the Black Lives Matter so while I kind of, um, I read on Twitter and social media and I could hear people on the streets like chanting and demanding rights and justice for, um, against racism and for the people, I'm like, man, I wish I could be there right now and I wish I could say something, but it's just, it's such a surreal thing, you guys that your body still thinks that you're pregnant even your baby is not alive anymore so my boobs were still huge and i still felt someone inside and during that weekend i just wanted to not exist anymore because god um because it's just horrible to have someone dead inside it's just one of the most horrible things ever so now you can <laughs> so you so you now can understand why i i wasn't tweeting anything and i wasn't instagramming and anything and i got this one comment that hurt me so much saying like if you're not saying something it's because you're taking the side of the oppressor and you're not using your social media account um for something amazing at black lives matter and i felt awful <sighs> because I really wanted to say something but I just I couldn't I just I didn't it was just it's so hard to describe as you can tell um so during that weekend I kind of like disappear um from everything and I had to god wait until Tuesday arrived and it was just like the the time passed so slowly you guys that's another like great contradiction about when you go through something like this through loss that you can't do anything you don't feel like doing anything you don't have to, the strength to open your computer and put some youtube on the background but at the same time you can't sleep i couldn't fall asleep i couldn't sleep at all and so I was just like laying on my bed for hours and hours and hours just like staring at the window so finally Tuesday arrived and um and then I had to take an uber to go to Planned Parenthood um because it's in uh, all over in like lower Manhattan again this is like the inconvenience of the pandemic Ed had to stay outside the entire time because they only allowed patients to go in so like I said, the surgery is called a DNC, which stands for dilatation and curatage. The people from Planned Parenthood, they were so nice and caring. Um, I had to fill out lots of forms, obviously, uh, stating that 
I, I want this procedure to, to get done and I am aware of um, everything that is going to happen. Uh, it was, the, the procedure itself isn't as long as uh, every, like all the time that I had to wait because they, they, they do a lot of exams before you go in. They uh, take some blood out of you. Um, they actually, you have a couple of interviews with nurses and doctors just to make sure that you're basically sane. Uh, they want to obviously confirm that you're pregnant, so they do one last sonogram. That was actually a really sad moment for me because I remember the doctor asked me, do you want to see the baby? And I'm like, no, I don't want to see the baby um, because it was just too painful to see the baby, as you might imagine. So after all of those exams and those um, interviews that I do, they explain you the procedure entirely. I chose you guys the full sedation only because, as you can imagine, I didn't want to be conscious during that um, surgery. I didn't want to witness anything, but I know a lot of people want to be um, asleep, like waist down, and they want to be awake, uh, or they want to be in this like sort of the, I, th I think the uh, second form of sedation is when you're in this like twilight state and I think that's what they call it which are basically half sleep, half, half awake you can't fe feel anything but you're somehow conscious and the third one, which is the one that I chose is the full sedation and the procedure, you guys, is so short it's about around um, half an hour, 40 minutes long that's the whole, like, you're asleep during uh, 40 minutes. And um, I, I was so nervous, as you can imagine, because I was all by myself in this waiting room amongst all of these other people with ureters, uterus, um, all of them experiencing different things, uh, being there for different reasons, but still super nervous and scared about what was going to happen after the procedure, I remember, of course, you don't feel anything and you're asleep before you can tell that you're asleep. Um, I was so relieved, you guys, once the whole thing was over because I've never been under any type of surgery. I've never, um, I've never been fully sedated. I've never had any surgery ever. So I was, kind of, I was super nervous, but Ed told me like, Fran, you're, nev you're not going to feel anything. And Borges is scratching his nails. I don't know if you can hear. Um, so it was kind of like both a huge relief to when I woke up, but at the same time, I was so sad that this thing, this whole thing was over. After that, we went back home. I remember all of the doctors told me like, yeah, you're going to be fine tomorrow. Just you have to wait until for, uh, 24 hours for the whole sedation to like fully affect of the sedation to um, go away but after this you can absolutely go your, back to your normal life after this and like you can go for a run tomorrow you can have sex tomorrow you can do whatever you want if you feel ready and i'm like amazing this is like i mean i'm obviously going through an immense amount of pain but it's a, it was a huge relief for me to think that tomorrow i can start new but oh no, you guys, that friend, past friend, had no idea what she was going under <laughs> because after my procedure, you guys, even though I was going through the biggest emotional pain of my life, I also went through the biggest physical pain that I've ever endured in my life. The next day, I started feeling this piercing, incredibly painful, pain in my abdomen i have never even though i was pregnant i have never given birth but it feels like on how people with uterus tend to describe this it feels like contraction so i went through an immense amount of pain you guys that lasted around a week and when you have a miscarriage or when you have an abortion or even when you give birth you have something called the second birth in which you get rid of a lot of tissue and blood clots i'm sorry for being so um raw and honest about this and you're supposed to wear diapers or really heavy duty pads and this was something that 
not a lot of people told me and prepared me for and this is something this is the reason why i'm making and filming this video because no one ever prepares you for this and i was kind of super worried about the amount of pain that pain that i was going through because i have cat hair all over my face because i couldn't stand up you guys from the pain that i was going through again really piercing horrible pain in my abdomen i couldn't even like pooping and peeing was painful you guys and i remember calling the emergency line from Pan pa planned parenthood and i'm like yeah i was a patient um i had my dnc about two days ago or like a day ago and this has happened to me and i'm so scared because it's pain it's painful to breathe it's painful to stand up uh, stand up even to lay down it's just horrible and you're like you're basically contracting your entire body in order to not feel anything and you're still feeling a lot and the doctor said look we checked your uterus and there's nothing left there because we checked um after your procedure so i know there's nothing there left so this is not an infection and but because of the way how your uterus the doctor was telling me is placed there's no sense there's a lot of sensitivity around your intestines and your bladder and this is why it's so painful to poop and pee and this is why you feel more pain than um, another human being that was going through this procedure and I'm like oh thank you so much basically she told me and this is I, I please don't take this as a guidance uh, my amount of pain but she said if you're taking pain kill, uh, painkillers and the pain doesn't go away you have to go uh, you have to go to emergency if you see blood clots the size of a lemon or bigger than a lemon you have to go to the emergency room if you if you can smell a weird smell coming from your vagina or something like that yeah, it might be an uh, it might be an infection and you have to go to the emergency room as well or if um, you're bleeding so much that you're soaking wet, uh, you're soaking basically two pads, uh, like the bigger ones, in less than one hour. So all, all of those are the reasons in which you have to go back to the emergency room or to the hospital. And even though my pain was a lot and I wanted to die, I took some painkillers and the pain luckily went away after a while. So I had to resist basically guys and um, that was the worst week of my life. So uh, my physical pain went away uh, about like a week after my procedure but I kept bleeding a couple of days before that. Uh, bleeding can last up, uh, up until six weeks and it could be it's not that bleeding it's like a period in which like you have a really heavy period and then it kind of like slows down or like goes um, less and less blood throughout the period situation having a miscarriage or an abortion means that sometimes you have days in which you have basically no blood some days or days in which you have a lot so it goes up and down a lot but luckily my bleeding even though it was horrible and it lasted for a while it didn't last six weeks it lasted two weeks or something like that or like a week and a half now i understand why so many people don't talk about this and so many people with uterus came forward when i spoke about my miscarriage because they kept this as a secret and i understand why no one wants to ever talk about this this because it's been the great like the biggest pain that i've ever been through emotionally and physically um why no one talks about this you guys well because obviously it's a great deal of pain uh i think another reason it's because this is not like someone you once knew has died this is a person that not a lot of people uh, probably knew that existed in the first place because not a lot of people tell when they're pregnant so when you have a miscarriage it's like should i be even announce this if no one knew this baby um it's like a new a news not worth mentioning because either you make someone feel bad about you and feel so like sad about the situation or you're making someone feel uncomfortable about the situation because it's such a like hard thing to comfort that I understand that someone doesn't have the words to comfort this situation so you're like I might as well not tell anyone because 
this is horrible for me and I can't put anyone else through this you know this situation also I, un I can understand why no one talks about this because sometimes you guys people that are around you family members and friends or even like acquaintances in an effort to make you feel better sometimes they try to find the reason why this went wrong because they want to help you and they have the best intentions in heart and when something goes wrong or there's an issue and a problem they either want to found they either want to find the the guilty like the the re, like the who is guilty of this or what is the reason behind this happened to you i don't know if this is their intention obviously but all of the guilt goes to the person who is carrying the baby or the dead baby in this case and i know it's not their intention but we got a lot of advice from people and like really weird ways to make us feel better someone also told us again from a really i i bet a really a nice place and because they want to help us and like to figure out what went wrong but a lot of people were like oh you went through this because you're already 32 and your chances of a miscarriage is higher or they were telling me uh that since ed and i have such intense stressful lifestyles this happened because we were stressed and I'm like, no, this has nothing to do with stress. Like, I, when, when a doctor, an expert, an OBGYN that has been working for decades bringing children to this world is telling you, you did nothing wrong and this is not because of stress or because of COVID or because of the pandemic or because you drank coffee, is telling you that. But there's people that sometimes they have no idea what they're talking about and they tell you it's because you're freaking stressing out all the time. You feel like crap because you feel like you're the guilty one. Again, it might have been with the best intention on heart, but it hurts so much, you guys. And this is why no one talks about this because it's painful and because sometimes people want to help you, but it backfires. So this has been a really intense moment for me and Ed. So this happened, you guys, my, my surgery happened um, four weeks ago and I'm still feeling in a limbo because even though I'm not I mean I just cried while filming this video but even though I'm not crying all day long like I used to I um, I feel immense sadness still because I see people I see pregnant people and I get emotional and I see pictures of my baby and I get emotional. YouTube keeps recommending me pregnancy videos, which is funny. Um, so it that has been something really hard to get used to. It got, like I remember it took me so long to um, like get used to the idea that I was pregnant and now I have to get used to the idea that I'm not pregnant anymore. I just wanted to thank my patrons for being such a nice support system throughout this whole thing i kind of abs absent myself from social media and from the shop and from everything for a long time and i i had no idea what i would have done without you guys um because your support has been on and beyond and one of my patrons um shared with me a reddit post about grief and how grief comes and goes in waves i'm going to leave the text like the paragraph down below because it's been so i felt so seen when i read that post and uh grief comes and goes in waves and sometimes you go under this like huge wave of sadness and you think you're going to die from like crying so much and existing is so painful and then the wave goes and passes and you start living again because there's life in between these waves and you kind of like this functional sadness in which you can work and you can do the dishes and go to a supermarket and you kind of like function while being sad all the time. So I think if I can describe how I feel right now, you guys, I feel like I am in between waves. I, 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 I feel really grateful that I'm not in physical pain anymore and I'm not bleeding anymore. And I started working recently, I started painting and drawing recently, which has been super nice. 
uh, but it's still super hard you guys and if you're ever going through this and if you have someone near you who's going through this I know it's a super hard thing to comfort because it's just one of it's like when you lose someone even if you met that person or not it's just someone it's something that it's uncomfortable no how do you it's so hard to comfort it's so hard to say something nice because there's nothing you can do to make that person feel better and believe me i know like i understand and i'm not asking you to say something nice to me or anything um but just the fact that please be there for that person even if it means listen to that person or hug that person or bring food to that person that's more than enough we know that when you go to a miscarriage is something really hard to comfort we know that i know that <laughs> and I, when i was sharing this news with friends i told them like please don't feel guilty if you have nothing to say because i know it's such a like weird thing to comfort and like such a hard thing to find the right word so please do not worry uh but when you sit there and you listen and you hug that person and you ask them how what I can do, what can I do for you? Do you, when you ask that person how can you comfort them? It's more than enough. Uh, sometimes that person is going to ask you to give them space and please allow them to grieve and have that space, but at the same time offer them stuff like like I said like wine or food or um, an ear or hugs or flowers. Flowers are always a nice gift and being there, even if it's being quiet, it's more than enough. That is the greatest gift, you guys. And if you're going through this, if you're going through a miscarriage, baby, you're not alone. We have all, I mean, it's not that we're all being there. I'm so happy that not a lot of people go through this, but it's way common that we think. It's just that no one talks about this. And I want to remind you that even though this is a common thing, this doesn't mean, my cat is here, that doesn't mean that it's, um, it's less painful because it's more common. I've read so many comments online because of your experiences, af experiencing, uh, experiences after me sharing my miscarriage saying, I felt so dismissed by people saying that, oh, since it's just such a common thing, I shouldn't feel bad about this or I shouldn't feel sorrow or sadness or loss. And I just wanted to tell you that even though it's a common thing, you're absolutely allowed to feel loss and to feel sorrow and to feel sad and cry because this is losing someone. I really hope that you get to feel better soon and please, if you want to cry, cry. It's better to let all of that stuff, that like word vomit out rather than holding it up. So please cry all you want. Thank you so much to all of you guys who have been not only a great help for me and Ed with your words, but also if you're comforting someone right now who is going through hell, because even though we know it's a again it's such a like hard thing to comfort I, we and i really appreciate when you're there for a friend so thank you so much guys for offering that comfort to a friend even in such hard times i really really wanted to thank you for watching this video and for supporting me on patreon and for allowing us to keep paying our rent even though we have been so absent during this um, month. If you can't support me on Patreon, that abs that's absolutely fine. By watching this video, you're doing more than enough. But I, ha oh God, I love you so much, you guys. You have no idea. And thank you so much for everything and for existing and for being here with me. So I hope you're having a lovely week ahead, a lovely weekend ahead as well. And I wish you all the best during this um, rough times. Um, see you next week, guys. Bye-bye.